and they had a store called Lane and Waterman. And then they moved to Los Angeles. And then you remember my daughter, Palmyra, she got married. That was in 1911. Uh -huh. 1911. And then, um, see, in 1912, I believe, Julia married Jean, uh, John Williams. Well, yes, and he named our, they named our grandson after Ashir, which made him so happy. <laughs> oh, so now I had plenty of time to devote to my own projects. Um, Ashir and I, we contributed to uh, the Jewish charities for orphans in San Francisco and hospitals and uh, the Federation of Jewish Charities in Los Angeles. And weren't you also founding members of the Jewish Orphans Home in Los Angeles? We, that was another project we were involved in. In 1913, we all found out about a group of people who were trying to raise funds to help those afflicted with tuberculosis. Ashil and I made a contribution that helped them to make a down payment on 10 acres of land way out there in Duarte, California. Mm -hmm. And a year later, it became the Los Angeles Sanatorium and it opened up with 31 patients. And it became the City of Hope and is now at the forefront of the nation's leading medical and research institutions. Oh, that is correct. Well, I have tried to help local people whenever I can also. You know, I've always remembered our shield's flight from his homeland as a young man. And so I try to help other immigrant families when they come here. I have a little bit of my own money, and so I make loans to families when I hear about them in need. I have a card here from one of them. Take a look. It says, Dear Mrs. Levy, when I left Austria, I only knew that I had to find a new home, but I never dreamed I would meet someone as generous as you. With your loan, I bought 400 acres of good land and planted walnuts, sugar beets, and lima beans. Thanks to you, my family is safe and happy, and my farm is successful. Very truly yours, Mike Wigovich. Well, it was right around that time that I got involved with the Red Cross. Uh -huh. How did you get involved with that? <laughs> well, when the Great War came, you know, uh, when it was over, actually, uh, these men returned home. I was concerned. The soldiers came back with injuries, illnesses, and they had no money and no prospects. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have been my boy, Joseph. My heart went out to them. But what could I do? Well, I joined the Red Cross, which was new in Ventura County at the time. Oh, and somehow I ended up on the board of directors. Well, we worked hard to help the soldiers to adjust to their post-war life. And now I must tell you the sad part of my story. One day, Ashir came home feeling sick. Well, we thought it must be the flu, so I called Dr. Livingston. The next day, he called my daughter Anna in um, Los Angeles and he told her to bring the heart specialist. But it was too late for my beloved Ashir. Oh, here's another newspaper clipping that I said. It's too sad for me to read it. It says, February 24th, 1922. Today, Jewish funeral services were held for Abraham Ashir Levy of Oxnard in his home on D Street, officiated by Rabbi Sigmund Heck of Los Angeles. The funeral procession to the Ivy Law Cemetery was one of the longest in the county's history, forming a solid line of carriages and cars from the cemetery to downtown Oxnard. Thousands of residents from both sides of the river share their grief at his passing. His reputation for square dealing is as wide as the county, and there was no businessman more popular among both farmers and local townspeople. Well, by that time, Joe was 35 years old, and he was ready to take over the bank. I am pleased to say that he followed his father's policies in lending, and he truly cares about people, both his employees and customers. <sighs> He treats them like family, and they are always welcome in a home. Well, the 1920s brought about so many changes to our world. 
We women got the right to vote in national elections. <laughs> Some women even cut their hair and shortened their hemlines. Not me, of course. <laughs> All of the ladies fell in love with Rudolph Valentino mm -hmm. in that movie, The Sheik. Did you know that they filmed it right over there in Oxnard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now they're calling Oxnard the new Hollywood. And the stars are coming and buying little cottages on the beach for $250. <laughs> Oxnard is now advertised as the biggest little city on the coast with a population of 4,000 people. Oh. Uh, let's see, I, tell me about this picture. Oh, that was the big party that Joe and I went to with the farmers in Oxnard, celebrating the success of the sugar beet crop. Hmm, wasn't that during Prohibition? Ah, oh, yes, but that didn't stop the merriment in Oxnard. Ooh, there were 1,500 people there, drinking and feasting and doing the Charleston to a six-piece band. <laughs> oh, well. With that many people, I bet the bank was booming, too. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> well, now, here's a picture of Joe's masterpiece. So he got caught up in the euphoria of the 20s, too. He decided it was time for a new bank building which, of course, he designed himself in the new Beaux-Arts style. Oh, my heart burst with pride when businessmen from all over the county and even the state came to see our new bank building at the grand mm. opening. <laughs> Beautiful. I remember when the St. Francis Dam broke in 1928. You were a real hero then. Mon Dieu. Oh, it was my busiest time ever. Ooh. I remember when the Red Cross called me in the middle of the night because people were running for their lives from the flood. Oh, I will never forget that night. What did you do? Well, I knew that so many people, families all over Ventura County were in danger, and so I went door to door in my neighborhood in Oxnard, and I collected supplies for the victims of the disaster blankets, clothing, food, anything that people could spare for the victims. I have never seen such devastation. Mm. In fact, you wrote down the statistics in this book. 12 billion gallons of water <coughs> flooded. Over 500 people died. More than 1,000 homes destroyed. The towns of Saugus, Piru, Fillmore, and Santa Paula were all ruined. Well, I hope that Ventura County does not ever see such a disaster again. <coughs> Lucy, how did the bank survive during the Great Depression? Oh, how well I remember 1929, <laughs> when that stock market crashed. Ooh. Well, on Black Tuesday, Joseph stayed calm while everyone else was in a panic. Mm. Mm. Well, um, what about that day in 1933 when President Roosevelt ordered all the banks closed. Well, that day, oh, the customers, they were lined up outside the bank when Joe got there. The tellers, they wanted to close up and go home. But my Joe, he thought about what his papa would do, and he came up with a solution. Well, he posted a close sign on the front door of the bank, and then he went inside and cashed a personal check. Then he went back outside through the back door, and he made personal loans to the families using our own family funds. They called this side door banking. And Joe managed to keep the bank operating and our customers happy during those depression years. Ashia would have been so proud of the way my Joseph handled this crisis. Yes. Well, I heard some people speak about your work during the Depression also. Someone called you Oxnard's Angel of Mercy. <laughs> well, I suppose that is because I like to help people out whenever I can. And you know, during the Depression, many people were hungry and homeless, and there's always work to do. Mm. I try to make sure that families are safe and children do not go hungry. <laughs> well, Lucy, you've had a very interesting life. Well, I have done what I can to make this world a better place as a wife of 40 years, a mother and a grandmother. Well, and I have faith in the generations to come to carry on what Ashiel and I have started. 
and keep our Jewish traditions safe for the future. Thank you, Minnie, for helping me to share my stories and my memories today with these wonderful people. It's my pleasure. Lucy Levy died in 1934 at the age of 71. During her lifetime, she had a profound influence on the lives of her husband and son, both professionally professionally and personally. She adjusted to pioneer life with energy and grace and her ongoing efforts in charitable and humanitarian causes enhanced the community. The Bank of A. Levy was family owned for over a hundred years through four generations. Many branches were established throughout Ventura County, but the 1927 building that Lucy was so proud of was the main headquarters. In 1995, when the bank was sold to First Interstate Bank, the Star Creek Press had this to say about the sale. Ventura County may have grown to the point it needs the services of a financial giant. In its heart, however, it still harbors the dusty farming community that borrowed money for lima bean seeds from a good-hearted merchant who cared about his neighbors. So thank you for joining us. Um, Connie, Diane, and I are docents at Heritage Square. We have a table in the back with some of our flyers, and um, Diane and, some, uh, and Connie have other presentations, so we have a list of those. So thank you. From uh, Councilman Jim Hensley, Tom Fig, and oh, Mayor Pro Tem, John you. Sharkey, these pens from the oh. city. And I'd also like to give you, for your presentation, uh, three DVDs done by uh, Dorothy Ramirez, Ellen Brandt, and uh, Bob Miranda. Uh, these, have, these have a lot of real treasures that you could put into something.